Hello, my beautiful Libras, and welcome to your horoscope for February 2020. As you can see, I'm in a new location, new space, new setup. It looks a little crazy right now, but give me some grace. We'll get it figured out. But what we're here to do is talk about what's happening in the cosmos, what's happening on the cosmic um, landscape for you this month in February. Now, the big news to be paying attention to this month, Libra, is the fact that Mercury is going to retrograde. And I want to bring your attention right here at the beginning of the video to the fact that Mercury is going to retrograde from the 17th until March 10th. And that's a big deal. That's when we're in the actual action of the retrograde. But... Mercury is moving nicely through shadow as of the second, okay? So you might start to see some symptoms of your Mercury retrograde well before we get to the retrograde. And what I would tell you is use your retrograde. Celebrate your retrograde. It's trying to take you back to clean up something that has to be adjusted so that you stay on course for your best success moving forward. So if you don't already keep an astrology journal or you don't kind of keep track of what's happening during this time, this is a good time to start that so you can see how this works in your cycles, okay? All right, let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. So right at the beginning of the month, on the third, we actually see Mercury, who's been dancing over here in the energy of Aquarius, hyper-thinking, lots of ideas, lots of, oh, I could do this, I could do that. He's going to move out of the place of just ideas and move into the area of Pisces, where now Mercury is going to start to bring together the dreams. And if you think about the cycles of how these work, right? In the energy of Aquarius, we're thinking of the idea, what could it look like going forward? We've got to get a dream and a vision happening around it here in the energy of Pisces. And then we will move this into action in the energy of Aries, okay? So right now is your dream time. And it is very dreamy, as a matter of fact, because Mercury, being our planet of communication, decision making, our thinking, our studying, our adapting patterns, business, it's a very business savvy kind of energy. He doesn't have those strengths. He doesn't have pure logic and intellect to guide him in the energy of Pisces. Pisces is a water energy. It moves between the worlds. It trusts empathy. It trusts the intuition, dreams, vision. So when a planet moves into a sign, it has to get on board and act like the sign. It has to do business like that sign. So Mercury is going to have to put down a whole bunch of logic, which trust me, think about it. If you just try to think yourself into a new reality, how often does that work for you? You can't. You've got to get the idea, build a little steam behind it, and then it can come, right? So here, Mercury has to stop being so incredibly logical. Trust the vision. Trust the intuition. Trust the calling. Tap into the energies of the past and this life. What can I create in a world that I can't quite touch it that I can bring into a world that I can? So Mercury is in a position in Pisces that we say he's in fall because he's not in his full power. He's not just out here logically making decisions. So while Mercury travels through the energy of Pisces, remember, your thinking is going to be a little bit more dreamy, and it's like trying to see through water. So trust your intuition. Trust those dreams. Write things down that you're dreaming about, or if you catch certain things out of the corner of your eye, write them down. They're helping you to create the vision along with Neptune and Venus traveling here as well. So Mercury now, here enters into the space of the sixth house for you. The sixth house is our health, the health of our body. I also put mental health and wellness in there. What are you thinking? What's occupying your not mind? What do you think that you are just worrying about or spinning about? Because it's telling you your fear. Worry is fear, right? In your thought process of how you're talking to yourself, what's happening up there for you? In your physical body, is it time to get to the gym? Is it time for health and fitness? Any of those things. As well, the sixth house is the house of our daily routines. What does your day look like? Right? Do you have places in your day where you're like, this is really crazy, I could use an adjustment here, or I'd like this to be smoother, or yeah, I'm just enjoying the heck out of this daily routine. The sixth house is also the house of small animals and of being of service to someone. So, you know, Libra, let's say you were in a position where, yes, of course you want to do something charitable, so maybe you're taking care of people in that way, but if you're also... Um, 
taking care of someone like in their home or you're taking care of a parent or something like that. You've got a very busy fourth house, so there could be a lot of family stuff going on, and maybe you're in charge of caring for that or it's on your mind. Mercury coming here is going to help soften this area for you just a little bit. You might have to trust your intuition a little bit more with your daily routine, with your health, with your fitness. But if you wanted to make changes before Mercury is fully into its retrograde, you can start to... Think about this. You can start to dream about what you would want this area to look like for you in your life, but certainly know that your daily routine could also start feeling a little bit like, well, wait, what do I do next, right? Hold on, I gotta stop and I gotta pause and I gotta think about this a little bit longer. And that's okay, you're not going crazy. That's just the normal action of the placement here. But take note of what's coming up for you in these areas because they're the same things you're going to look back over in this retrograde okay on the sevens you'll see that venus has taken her move up here into the energy of aries now venus and aries is love on fire right i am a venus and aries placement so i can tell you we are fast we are furious we are impulsive and venus and aries is very good at saying this is what i need because remember the planet has got to get on board to get things done like the sign that it's in Venus is very diplomatic, so she's not always comfortable in the energy of Aries because Venus wants harmony and everybody wins, right? And Aries is the I energy. Here's what I need, right? I'm here to fight for my things. So I love this in your seventh house area. What do you need, Libra? Are you asking for what you need? Are you letting people know what you need? Do you know what you need, right? Keep these things in mind as you're traveling with this Venus and Aries energy here. Not to mention, I do love that despite being kind of uncomfortable in Aries, Venus is very magnetic wherever she goes. She brings relationships. She brings money where she's at. You could find yourself being very magnetic this month. Are you hanging out with people that maybe are a little bit different than you? Or you're attracting people to you who are a little bit different. Are you feeling a little bit flirty, Venus? If you're ready for a relationship, this can bring it in. And this is your ruling planet, Libra. So if you are looking to have a relationship in your life or to smooth something in a relationship, Venus brings that harmony. This may be the energy that is helping you take care of those things. And this is not just in a romantic relationship. This is in business relationships. And I also do think if you've got an open enemy, somebody you know you have a problem with, this energy will help you here as well. On the 9th, we've got a full moon happening in the energy of Leo, which is going to light up your 11th house, okay? Now, at the full moon, we know that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. A shift needs to come to this area so that it can kind of course correct, get on track as healthy as it can. And the thing I think about with a full moon, right, because you have to have the ending, the acknowledgement, or the adjustment, it's like you have this runner in your life, this emotional runner, right, the moon, and they need to replenish, they need to hydrate, they need to have a little snack bar for the marathon that they're running. So at the moon you get the opportunity to refresh and replenish and to adjust. Here in the 11th house and in this big bold energy of Leo, Leo is expressive, self-expressive, it's creative. There's a lot of originality that comes with Leo because it doesn't want to copycat anymore, right? So here in the 11th house, where is it time for some refreshing of your friendship zone, right? And that doesn't mean you have to go out there and throw all your friends out. That is not what Auntie Stormy is saying at all. What I mean is the best way to have a friend is to be a friend. Do you need to check up on this area? In your friendships, are you ready to find that soul tribe? Are you ready to connect more? Are you ready to get in there with other people? Are your social media profiles up, updated? And even if you don't social media, you know, is your resume current? What's, what do you have going here that ensures you have support for your future going forward, right? This is a wonderful time with this moon to consider that. Now, Venus is in Aries, so this moon could also attract somebody to you who maybe was a friend or that you meet from a social place and they become a significant relationship in your life. Maybe not a lover, maybe a very significant friend or cultural group or social group that you connect with. It's a lovely energy for sure. On the 16th, we see Mars making his way into 
the energy of Capricorn. Now, Mars in Capricorn, Mars gets into Capricorn and he's like, I'm here. And they are so happy to see each other, right? Because Mars wants to do stuff and be about stuff and he's boots on the ground, kind of movement, action, energy. And even though he does bring some conflict with them as well, he still wants to just do stuff. And Capricorn wants to do stuff. He wants to achieve, be resourceful, make progress, right? So Capricorn gives Mercury this kind of structure to channel all that do stuff energy. So this is a highly, highly productive energy for you. Now this is down here in the fourth house, okay? So Mars coming into this fourth house where you've had a lot of work going on, you've been doing a lot of growing, taking on new responsibilities, and whether that has been with your home, your family, your real estate, your property, your emotional well-being, your emotional psychology that you're standing and building a foundation of your life on, you've been putting in some work and expanding here, okay? Now Mars is going to say, let's move some things forward. Where do we need to look at being in control of this area instead of letting this area control us, right? Where do we need to make some different moves around the family instead of having the family or the house or the whatever be taking these moves with us? Another thing that I keep being shown for you guys is maybe this is a housing repair or a renovation or something that is going on. Now, one thing I do want to point out to you is that with Uranus here traveling through the 8th house, Uranus is a very electric kind of energy. It's very, very electric. And Mars meeting here in the 4th house, this gives me the idea that perhaps maybe in a home zone in some way, shape, or form, you need to be paying attention to um, electrical work or... Um, wiring or maybe you'll have electrical issues or something that needs your attention in a very electrical sphere. Whenever I see combinations of the fourth house being as electric as it is or the eighth house being as electric as it is and the fourth house being stimulated by Mars, for me it is a signal that we need to pay attention to electricity, fires, things like that, okay? All right, on the 17th, we have Mercury now taking a retrograde right here in your sixth house, and it's going to be retrograde in that position. It's going to retrograde actually between Pisces and Aries, but we're going to start the retrograde here, but it will come out of retrograde and revisit this area again when we get to March, okay? But as we start the retrograde here, again, be rethinking your daily routine, your diet, your fitness, your service to other people. Do you have things going on with animals? You know, if you run an animal clinic, this is a wonderful time to take an inventory of that area. Or if you do something where you work with maybe rescue animals or something like that, you could also find yourself being busy with Mars here. But remember, the retrograde is trying to give you the opportunity to re. We reevaluate, reconnect. Um, re-edit, rethink, you go back to something. So this could also be a time where you're needing to go back to a health and fitness plan or go over that health and fitness plan again or something like that or, you know, it's the beginning of the year. Is it just time to go over what does my daily routine look like? What do I look like as I enter the next quarter of business? Relook over the daily things. If you do freelance work, you could have a job opportunity coming back to your table again as well. All right, on the 19th, we've got the sun now entering into the energy of Pisces. Busy. This is nice. You've got a nice amount of work happening for you here in the sixth house, which you also have co-workers and freelance work happening over here. So this is busy. But with the sun coming in here, you become motivated. The sun brings light, heat, life, vitality. There is movement to this area. Mercury is retrograde here. So the interesting part about this is that I think whatever you're going back to, whatever you're looking over, you are motivated. So it's maybe not just this big old drag on your energy. And if you feel tired or you feel like your energy is getting a little bit lower, the sun is here as a helper, as a motivator in this particular area to do the work of the sixth house. And this is again why I tell you, I think with Mars here in your fourth house and then the sun moving in, you might find that your daily life becomes a little bit busy and therefore needs an evaluation in how you're going to adjust the schedule, okay? On the 20th, we have got this interesting aspect happening. So we've got Jupiter who's here in your fourth house coming into a sextile with Neptune, who's here in your sixth house. Now, when the planets have sex, my friends, 
that is good for us, right? Because it's not only a pocket of opportunity, but it means you're going to also intelligently step into taking action, take advantage of it. So this is an aspect of progress. So again, I love the fact that we've got this Mercury retrograde sun business here, and it's taking you backwards. It's saying we've got to revisit or reevaluate something in this sixth house area if we're going to progress this area forward, right? Jupiter here in Capricorn wants your greatest good. He wants your greatest good in your structures and your foundations. So one of the other things I think of for you, Libra, is truly, and going back to your day-to-day -day routine, your health, your whatever, are you having to go back over your own thinking, right? What are the things you're willing to shed and you're willing to let go of because now that you're at a different place, some of those thoughts, some of those arguments, some of those beliefs are not necessarily valid. Is it true that maybe just something has happened and your schedule has changed, but you've got to adjust here in order to take this home area forward? Are you going back to with a moon having happened up here in the 11th house? Are you making peace or reconnecting with a woman and who was maybe a part of your daily life for a very long time? Are you going back to studying something that you were really into for a long time? So whatever it manifests for you, I would love to hear about that in the comment section down below, okay? All right, as we end this month, we are going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Pisces. This is brilliant. So the aspect that happens when we have a new moon is that the sun and the moon come together. Our luminaries come together. And when they come together, absolutely anything is possible. Now, the new moon is the darkest, calmest, quietest time of the moon cycle. But we plant our seeds of intention here because anything's possible in this sixth house area with a flipped around Mercury energy that has stimulated this space, right? What do you want to recreate, right? And you're going to remember in this retrograde, get a chance to have that Mercury step back in this fifth house as well. So at this new moon, I would encourage you, plant your seeds of intention and ask yourself, how, does, how do I bring something into my life that brings me joy, right? How do I joyfully adjust my daily routine? How do I joyfully choose to participate in activities, fitness activities that bring me joy? What can I do to go back and give love and speak life into animals or other people in my daily life who need me to be of service to them? How do you step back and bring joy to the surface? Because when you're joyful, you're moving in a vibration that is just gorgeous and untouchable. And with such a busy life down here, what have you found out that is bringing you joy today? right? So I think it's a brilliant new moon. Plant your seeds of intention. And if the things that you want at this new moon as well are more work, I would like more people to visit my blog. I would like to work more freelance. I would like to get more ghost writing deals. Whatever your situation is in your daily routine or in your sixth house, this is your opportunity to plant those seeds of intention. And we will check in on those bad boys when we get to the next new moon, okay? All right, you guys. All right. Thank you for giving me so much grace as I'm learning this new setup and I am starting to learn lighting and all of that stuff. So thank you for your grace and thank you for your time being here with me. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to walking with you every week and every month and showing you what's happening in that big old sky up above, okay? All right, you guys, I will see you in the next video. I love you, Libras.